I was thinking about this this morning, and then I saw it on a comment on YouTube, and I thought, it's confirmed. In Man of Steel, the entire Snyder trilogy is laid out. You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. That's the journey of Superman in Man of Steel. They'll race behind you. They will stumble. They will fall. That's the journey of Batman in Batman v Superman. And then you have this. They will join you when the sun comes. In time, you will help them accomplish wonders. And that's how it ends in Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> oh, I'm excited to dive deep into this movie. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my theological review for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm super excited to have yet another opportunity to talk about this movie and dive deep into it. So this is going to be jam-packed full of spoilers and spoilers for Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. So if you're ready to talk spoilers and you're ready for a deep dive, let's do this. And if you like this type of video that I do, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and share this with a friend. They wanted me back for a reason. I need to find out why. Now for me, the whole key to this analysis is when Superman is brought back to life and he's walking through the ship picking the outfit he's going to wear. Sounds weird to describe it that way, but this is where he chooses the black suit. Now the reason I say this is the key is because if Man of Steel is about Superman, the ideal to strive towards, well then it only makes sense that that ideal is tested, right? So in Batman vs Superman, he is tested. He is tested as Lex Luthor frames him and turns the world against him. And even with the world against him, will he proceed to do his mission and give the world hope, which is the symbol of the House of El. It means hope. And then you have Batman coming against him. So all of this stuff working against him and then finally Doomsday. His heart is tested. So what's really clever about this scene when Superman is looking at his different suits as he's walking through the hallway, it's how they edited together what Jarrell has said and Jonathan has said. They will stumble. They will fall. You're gonna have to make a choice. They will join you in the sun, God. Will he stand proud in front of the human race? Will he fulfill his mission? And will he help them accomplish wonders? And then we get to the key lines. Your heart was tested, but you gave hope to their world. Love them, God, the way we loved you. So now Jonathan is saying, show the world who you are. And Jarrell is saying, love them as you have been loved. That's the ideal to strive toward. Once he was tested, he chose that ideal, but you gave the world hope. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. <laughs> But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. I really feel like what Jesus is saying there is a huge statement on faith and what faith in God is. We don't have to sit and the shadow of those mountains that we face in our lives and say that's impossible because with faith in God, we could tell those mountains to be removed and they will be removed. But God adds this other thing. Jesus adds this other thing. First, forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against. In other words, as we're having faith in God, we got to have faith in God, God's way. And I feel like this this whole verse, everything Jesus said there, is pictured so well in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And in fact, it's showcased so well in this trilogy. There's another verse in James that I think is excellent with this. In James chapter 1, it's talking about wisdom and how God is excited to give us wisdom. So we could come to him boldly and ask and believe we received. But the next verse says this. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. They told me the world only makes sense 
if you force it to. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They are unstable in everything they do. So here's God's way. Love and forgive as you have been loved and forgiven. The world's way is get even. And so as we're trying to hold on to get even, we need to hold on to that grudge and we're trying to move mountains. We can't be surprised when the mountains don't move because we're not having faith in God, God's way. God wants us to give him everything, our anger, our grudges, whatever it is we are holding, we need to release and surrender to God. And as we come to him completely surrendered and we have complete faith in him and our loyalty is not divided between the world's way and his way, we could tell those mountains to be moved and they will be moved. Now here's how this is pictured expertly in Zack Snyder's Justice League. The mountain to be moved is Steppenwolf. Now, how did Steppenwolf get to Earth to begin with? It's very interesting because as you go through Batman v Superman, which in this trilogy, this is the they will stumble, they will fall section. And what is Batman's major stumbling block in this film? It's his bitterness. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. That's key, corrupting many. Because as you're watching Batman v Superman, yeah, we may not have a whole history on Batman, but we know his character is being corrupted and not just by Lex Luthor and what Lex Luthor is doing to deceive, but by his own root of bitterness that has been poisoning him all these years. I think BVS opens with the death of the Wayne parents, not just to remind us Batman's mom is named Martha, but to show us this moment where Bruce watched his parents die, killed by a monster, and he was powerless to stop them. This is what Alfred says. The fever, the rage, feeling of powerlessness that turns good men cruel. In other words, it's that root of bitterness and it's poisoning him and it's corrupting him. And then you have that scene where he sees the Robin suit and on Robin's suit, it says, ha ha ha, jokes on you. So we know and learn later that Joker and Harley Quinn killed Robin and clearly Batman didn't save him. Another moment where he felt powerless and then we get the human perspective of the Superman and Zod fight in Metropolis through the eyes of Bruce Wayne. As Metropolis is collapsing around him, he's rushing to Wayne Tower to save as many of his people as he can. And we really see those feelings of powerlessness watered in a new way, that root of bitterness watered in a new way to grow even stronger in his life. And it's interesting because he's the world's greatest detective, right? And you would think the world's greatest detective would begin to catch on to what Lex Luthor is doing, how Lex Luthor is deceiving them. I mean, check out this scene. Ripe fruit, his hate. Two years growing, but it did not take much to push him over, actually. Little red notes, big bang, you let your family die. So what this shows is that root of bitterness became in Batman a hook, which Lex Luthor could get in and take advantage of. And he took advantage of it. Batman, as the world's greatest de greatest detective, if he wanted to, could have figured this out, but he didn't want to. His bitterness was consuming him. So the Batman-Superman fight, it was a distraction, while Luther was executing his true plan and bringing Doomsday to life. Yes, he wanted Superman to kill Batman and therefore corrupt his character, but what after that? His legacy is destroyed. Of course he has Doomsday to totally destroy Superman and leave him with absolutely nothing. But that's what we see, that Batman was distracted because of that root of bitterness corrupting and poisoning his character. He had a hook in him that Lex Luthor could exploit and take advantage of. And it's interesting how much this poisoned Batman's character, because here he is saying to Alfred, if there's even a 1% chance he could be our enemy, we have to take that as an absolute certainty. And then later when they're on the rooftop and he shoots Superman with that kryptonite gas pellet, he says, you're not brave. Men are brave. But that all turns around as he's standing over Superman with a kryptonite spear about to kill him and Superman says, save Martha. Yes, it's cheesy the way it's executed, but think about this. When Lois Lane explains that's his mother's name, imagine if there was a mirror there and Batman looked into that mirror. Looking back, he would not see Bruce Wayne's reflection, right? Looking back, he would probably see the reflection of the Joker. This is symbolic of him becoming the monster he swore to fight. His parents, his Martha, 
was killed by a monster in the street. He became Batman to stop that from happening again. He couldn't save Robin, and this root of bitterness begins to grow. As Superman flies through Metropolis fighting Zod, it becomes extreme. And now here he looks in this mirror, and he sees the full cost of that root, that he is making somebody powerless to save their Martha. He has become that monster. And then he sees this last thing. He, like a lot of humanity, hated and feared Superman. And in a world that hated and feared Superman, he gave hope. He looked in Lois's eyes and he said, you are my world. And Superman laid his life down for his world. Even though Batman had turned against him by Superman's death, he saved Batman. Though the world turned against him by his death, he saved the entire world. And it's this incredible picture of how mankind really did not like Jesus. He is the ultimate good. And the world that he created did not even recognize him when he stepped into it. And he died for those that were persecuting him and hating him. And he died to save every single one of them. To save every single one of us. So it becomes this incredibly powerful picture. And so now we have Batman changed in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And what we see here is a contrast between the root of bitterness and faith. Because I love how Batman says he's operating by faith in this movie. He says it twice to Alfred. Once, when Alfred is talking about, look, if your team's not ready, you can't wave the red cape in front of the charging bull. And Batman's like, I can because this cape charges back. He's talking about, I am not operating out of my guilt. I am going by faith. And then after he brings Superman back, he says to Alfred, he'll come. I know it. And Alfred says, how do you know that? Faith, Alfred, faith. You see it in Bruce's countenance, operating by faith. He's a totally different man. Operating by faith, he's having faith in Superman's character. He's been given that hope that Superman came to give the world. And so you see a complete change. And operating by faith, what does he do? He brings together a team of heroes. Without Batman bringing that team together, there would be no defeating Steppenwolf, which is a funny thing because Batman was distracted fighting Superman and Doomsday was created. The moment Superman was killed, his death cry rang out into the world and awoke the mother, mother boxes and they cried out to the darkness, calling out the Steppenwolf to come to the earth. That distraction opened the door and it brought about this mountain. But now, that Batman is operating by faith, we got redemption. And he was able to bring a team together. Without that team, without Cyborg, they wouldn't have been able to go inside the mother boxes and separate them. Without Superman, the ax would have come down on Cyborg destroying him, but Superman saved him. Without the Flash, they would have all lost because he turned back time in that amazing epic scene and he saved everyone. So acting by faith and letting go of that grudge and not going by his sense of justice or the world's way, he let it go and move by faith. And in moving by faith, he brought a team together and the mountain was moved. In all my Justice League spoiler talk, I have this great comment. This person said, notice how Batman's way of working is based on faith alone. He fought for the world because Superman already died for him. On Steppenwolf's end, he tried to work his way to earn Darkseid's favor, thus his inevitable failure because Darkseid is a cruel, evil overlord master while Superman is a friend. And that's how Jesus described himself. He said, greater love has no one than this to lay one's life down for one's friend. He called us his friends. He called himself a friend and he laid his life down for us, showing his love. We didn't earn his love or his grace. He gave it freely. So now we act by faith, not to earn grace or love, but because it was already given to us freely. So freely we have received and freely we must give. Going back to what Jarrell said to Superman, we have loved you, now go and love them. Then you have Cyborg and he's got this incredibly similar path that Batman has. And what makes his path even more powerful is the fact that Silas Stone leaves that voice recording explaining just how powerful Cyborg is. When we literally go into Cyborg's head and we see all that he could do, the Earth really is at Cyborg's mercy, like seriously. But he's got a major beef against his dad. Now his dad 
has truly prioritized his life wrongly. His dad has truly sinned against Victor. Even in the beginning where Victor makes the winning play and we see the crowds cheering and his mom there with the hands raised like, yeah, and the camera pans to the empty seat and that hurt just overcomes this great moment of victory and he's just hurt yet again. We know this is not the first time his dad hasn't been there for him. This is not the first time his dad hasn't shared in this moment. His dad has truly hurt him. His dad is truly untrustworthy. Cyborg though is holding on to that grudge and holding on to that anger and it's this root of bitterness. So when the accident happens and he's now cyborg and he's lost his mother, that root has grown so strong that he even says this awful line to his dad, if you had been there, she would still be alive. Of course, logically, he has no way of knowing that at all. It's just a saying he said out of complete hurt. And I love how you have Wonder Woman and Aquaman, and they're having a conversation about the Atlanteans and the Amazonians and how they hate each other. And Wonder Woman says, hate is useless. You really get to see in this movie how hate divides, how division is distraction, and how division invites a greater enemy than we've ever realized in. And so what we need to do is get past it. Hate is useless and we got to let it go. And so we see that with Cyborg. One of the most compelling things about his character is watching the rift between him and his dad heal as the movie progresses. It makes his character so compelling, especially when Silas lays down his life. It's a tragedy because it's like the moment that Victor has truly let it go and he could begin to have a relationship with his dad is that moment he loses his dad. A powerful message and we don't know how much time we have left. Hate is useless. And then it gets even more powerful because when the Flash hits Cyborg with that charge and he goes inside the mother box, he's tempted. Now this goes back to what I was saying, Batman with Luther. Batman had a hook in his heart with that bitterness. So no matter what, those boxes were gonna find something in Cyborg to tempt him with. And I'm pretty darn convinced if he had gone into that mother box still hating his father, there may have been an even more convincing temptation. There may have been something that he really couldn't have resisted as he entered into that box, but he forgave his father. And because he forgave his father, he was standing firm on the truth. The box tried to condemn him and call him broken. So follow me and we'll have a whole family again. And he looked at that and he said, I'm not broken and I'm not alone. And that's a powerful truth we need to get a hold of. Jesus makes us whole and he loves us as we are. And when we invite him in, he doesn't leave us where we are. He continues to walk with us and make us into something great and beautiful. He cares about you and me more than we could ever imagine. And when we are tempted, he does provide a way out. We just need to realize the truth. We are loved. At our worst, Jesus laid his life down for us. And that's where we need to make our stand. The fleeting pleasure of sin is nothing compared to the amazing glory of knowing God and having him in our lives and forming us into what he wants us to be. And that's what Cyborg realized. He wasn't a broken mess, he was a new creation. And so he said, I am not alone and resisted that temptation. Justice League, the Zack Snyder version, is an amazing film looking at unity. You have Steppenwolf with the false unity. He even says to, uh, I think it's Dasad, he says this. He says, these people are so divided. What we need to do is rip their free will from them and give them the absolution of belief and servitude to dark side. That's Satan. Satan wants to force and tempt. God doesn't do that. God calls us and woos us. And that's what dark side wanted to do, was strip away our free will with this thing called the anti-life equation. Now I'm convinced if the anti-life equation was anywhere on the planet, it would be where the Garden of Eden used to be, now gone because of the flood. But there, because that's where man was tempted and fell, where death entered the world through one man, Adam. So it would be poetic of these fallen ones and their rebellion against God to seal our fate in darkness, to want to go to that spot, find the anti-life equation there and unleash that upon the world. But this continues the picture of what the enemy wants to do. Dark side wants to strip away our free will and make us serve him. 
And so the world would be remade in the image of Apocalypse and we would be transformed into parademons. Everything awesome and good and unique about us would be stripped away. It's exactly what the devil wanted in the Garden of Eden. He wanted to corrupt God's image in man and that's what he was seeking to do. And that's exactly what Darkseid would be doing by stripping away our free will and forcing us to be his servants. Darkseid wanted to absorb their wills, turn them all into parademons. The Justice League is unique people with unique gifts, all with something powerful to contribute, forming one body. And that's what God wants for us to willfully be united to him and that we become more ourselves than we ever were when we unite to him. And hate is useless. And it's amazing how the movie drives home that message. If I had such faith that I can move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I don't love others, I would have gained nothing. So when you watch Zack Snyder's Justice League, what do you see in this movie? I find it a powerful movie on so many levels and so many things about it I enjoy. So I look forward to hearing from you. What do you see in this film? And have you checked out Justice is Grey? I, I, at the time of recording this, I haven't watched the whole thing in black and white, but I gotta say, it looks pretty unique in black and white. So let me know if you've done that and what you think of that version. So while you're down there making those comments, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell by the subscribe button and be sure to share this video with a friend. And by hitting that bell, you'll be notified the moment I drop another theological analysis, movie review, ranking video, or anything else I do here. I'm Durbin. Thanks for checking out Durbania.